The BMW Race Days Compact Cup is brought to you in association with Gaz Shocks. And welcome to Alton Park. As you can see, we have a fantastic Indian summer day for the latest rounds of the BRSCC BMW Race Days Compact Cup here this weekend. Joe Bosch Wiggin got a double header win last time out at Donington and we'll be hoping to repeat that here this weekend. But it's James Gornall who comes into the weekend at the lead of the championship. It's all to play for out there this weekend and the conditions look nigh on perfect. Stay tuned for two gripping races. The last two races at Donington Park produced plenty of great action and even more twists in the championship story. Contenders James Gornall and Steve Daly did battle early on in race one before Steve encountered brake issues forcing him off the track. It was Joe Wiggin though who was able to take advantage for his second win in a row. Race two was just as competitive with Wigan and Daly dicing for the lead, whilst James Gornall this time fell off the track of Chicane, followed by Ian Jones. Joe, though, was able to hang on to take his third win in a row, catapulting himself into championship contention, with Steve Daly salvaging second. That means that James Gordle now arrives at Dalton Park only two points ahead of now Joe Wigan in second place. Steve Daly is third, but don't count out the rest just yet, with four races to go. Making a welcome return to the championship this weekend is two-time former champion Steve Roberts, who we caught up with before racing got underway. Well, I'm currently building a 330 to the 330 challenge, and um, the build's coming on, but taking slightly longer than we expected, just because, you know, uh, general life takes over. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're slowly getting the 330 together. And um, while we're doing that, I was kind of watching the compacts very closely on social media, watching the live timing, basically racing via text. So I thought I'll come back and have a crack myself. Cars lining up on the grid then for race number one here at Alton Park. This, though, is the second attempt to start the race. This is what happened the first time round. Jim Benson there in the orange and uh, blue car is going to have a spin, but look further back as Darren Ball in the black and blue car there goes onto the grass. The car spits back the other way as it rejoins the pack. Unfortunately, just there, he gets collected by several other cars, including Daniel Devereaux, Mark Armstrong, Richard Purcell, Graham Kersley, Andrew Partridge, and perhaps most notably Clyde Brooks, and he had a really serious uh, impact there. All drivers were okay, but the red flags had to fly, so this will be a restart over 12 minutes. Joe Wigan is who will line up on pole position with Sam Carrington Yates alongside, James Gordon and Steve Roberts row two, with Richard Mars and Simon Walker Hansel on the third row, Steve Daly and Jim Benson are on row four, row five for Declan McDonnell and Owen Hunter, with Craig Jameson and Neil Roach on row six. Well, the weather conditions could not be better. A beautiful cloudless sky here in the northwest. Ahead of race number one, Joe Wigan on pole position, but it's Sam Carrington Yates that gets the best start. On the outside of row number one, Sam Carrington Yates, I think he's going to get his nose in front on the run down towards the first corner. Yes, he does. And in fact, such is the tardiness of Wigan's start that it allows his championship rival, James Gornall, and the returning champion, Steve Roberts, to his outside. Joe fends them off. They all run out wide again over the grass. They haven't really learned their lesson from the first race. Back down towards Cascades we come, though. It's Carrington Yates from Wigan from just about still still at James Gordon in third with Walker Hansel then Roberts then Miles and there is Steve Daly who is muscling his way up the inside of Jim Benson through Cascade. Jim gets elbowed out wide but uh, remember Jim Benson also spun on that first attempt at the start but uh, has been able to retake his grip position towards the sharp end. He now has Declan McDonald going up the inside of him and the other Mac Attack racing car. Jim hangs it tough around the outside all just runs out of road but really running out of road is Neil Roach. Neil Roach's side who's on the grass. Can he save it? Oh it spits back the other way. Clatters in to the uh, foam barriers and he's lucky yes just about to get avoided by everybody else well that could have been another big shunt so Neil Roach with an adventurous start to the race he joins not quite at the back of the field but certainly with work to do from there Meanwhile, the race leaders are coming over hill top for the first time. It's Carrington Yates with Wigan with Gordon. And then this fight for fourth place, Simon Walker Hansel defending from Neil Roach. But Neil finds a gap on the inside line into his lops. There isn't really room for two cars though. And Walker Hansel gets squeezed out onto the grass and rejoins. Interestingly, he's still in front of Steve Roberts. So Steve Roberts will maybe uh, feel a bit aggrieved about that. But he's already closing back in again as they go up Clay Hill towards the uh, double apex right-hander at Druids out of sight there you go here is a replay from on board with Neil Roach through Island Bend you can see he just runs out of road almost like Jim Benson did in front of him and he almost had that saved but the car just flings back the other way over correct back into the track and that would have been a very very focusing moment indeed luckily everybody avoided him and he uh, rejoined with only his nerves in tatters 
Steve Roberts has got back up the inside of Simon Walker Hansel this time at Lodge and that allows Steve Daly up the inside too so Steve Daly will move through yes into fifth position but with his championship rivals Gornel, uh, sorry Wigan and Gornel second and third respectively there is more work to be done yet for the Scots he's now alongside Steve Roberts as they head up towards Old Hall Corner but that's the outside line that's not really likely to work cycling back through the field there's Craig James having a good run and there is Ian Jones Ian Jones started all the way down in 24th position on the grid but he's taken advantage of the drivers at the start to move up the order that is unfortunately the uh, number 15 car of Jim Barrett off the track at Druids and there is John Watt John Watt started at the back of the grid having replaced power steering just before qualifying didn't really get any quick laps in and the car is damaged from the first corner shunt so he's got work to do too leads up towards Island Bend they're catching Sam Carrington Yates aren't they and Joe Wigan is in a difficult position here he's hung he's stuck in the middle between the race leader and James Gordon in third Gordon gets alongside him and they make contact going into Ireland but into the shallow hairpin and James Gornall well did he end up in the gravel I'm not too sure Joe Wiggins continue but the car doesn't look healthy to me it's slithering and sliding all over the place yes Gordon has lost ground as well look and all of a sudden Steve Daly is ahead of him now so Steve having just said that he had all that work to do to catch his championship rivals they've driven into each other and done all the hard work for him so Daly moves him into third Gornall up into a, a fourth position down into fourth position excuse me Steve Roberts is fifth but is Joe Wiggins car okay as it comes over hill top he's keeping to the right hand side of the road the car appears to be going quite slowly though I'd say they drop down the hill into the braking zone Richard Miles there trying to go up the inside of uh, Steve Roberts into the chicane that one doesn't quite pay off well that could have been an awful lot worse for James Gordon who's got dirty tyres but thankfully only lost two positions as they go out of the corner and yes Joe Wiggin Joe Wiggin is sideways and I think the rear left tyre is deflated the contact has caused a rear left puncture for Joe Wiggin and would you believe it the man who was second place in the points and all, all set to take the championship lead away from James Gornal is now possibly going to be a retirement. How quickly the championship equation can change. Steve Daly has gone from being behind both of his championship rivals to now just ahead of championship leader James Gornal and significantly ahead of the Mac Attack racing car of Joe Wiggin. All of a sudden the Scott is in the pound seat. Out of Lodge Corner they go again. This has all allowed Sam Carrington Yates to really pull away at the head of the field. This is the fight for second place as we go on to the final lap of the race. So Daly, Gornal, Roberts, Miles and even Owen Hunter and Simon Walker Hansel really are all in this big train of cars. Daly just needs to try and keep James Gornal behind him and this will be valuable championship points. Down towards Cascades they come for the final time of Aston and James Gornal doing everything he can to find a way through. They drop down the hill. There's a gap on the inside. He thinks about it. He hits the brakes. He locks the brakes, drifts out wide. And then Steve Roberts is there waiting to pounce if the opportunity presents itself, which it may just have done. Steve Roberts is up the inside of James Gornal. This is not what the championship leader needs. He is OK at the moment with, Gort with uh, Joe Wiggin not scoring. But with Steve Daly in front of him, he's now losing even more points to the Scottish driver because through has gone Steve Roberts. And also Richard Mars is alongside James Gornal too. And he goes through. So two places he's lost for James he's snatching the brake again into the shell heaven I wonder whether he's flat spotted that tyre in the moment up there with uh, with Joe Wigan a while ago so Daly now has a couple of cars between himself and his nearest championship rival this is going to tighten the points up considerably through the Britain chicane we come for the final time still got half a lap to go there you wouldn't bet against more positions changing but it may not be Steve Daly losing ground it may be Steve Roberts because he has a moment through the chicane and that allows the resurgent Richard Miles back alongside him on the run down towards his lops and I think he's going to go through before they even hit the brake. So Richard Miles goes through into third behind Simon Walker Hansel with a peach of a move up the inside of Owen Hunter and he picks up a position as well. So still another couple of corners to go, both of which are overtaking opportunities if you're in a compact cup race, but certainly Lodge Corner the last turn is. Steve Daly is looking safe enough in second. There is the race leader Sam Carrington Yates. Easy to forget about him in all of this, isn't it? But he is still leading the way. Second place is Steve Daly. It's the fight for third that is going right down to the last corner. Steve Roberts looking to the inside of Richard Miles. That one won't work. James James Gordon is determinedly just trying to hold on to this uh, position, this fifth position he's in at the moment, and not lose any more ground. And behind, Declan McDonnell and Ian Jones are side by side as well. Down towards Lodge we come for the final time. Steve Daly turns through in second. I think Richard Miles, barring any dramas on the exit of the corner, should be able to hang on to second. But it is Sam Carrington Yates. Sam Carrington Yates who comes through to take his second race win of the year season, his first since Rockingham, though. Second is Steve Daly. How important could that prove to be? And it will be third place across the line just 
about for Richard Miles with Steve Roberts in fourth, James Gordle fifth, Owen Hunter sixth, Declan McDonald seventh, Ian Jones is eighth, Jack Drury ninth, and Jim Benson comes across the line to finish in tenth. There is confirmation of the result. The race winner, Sam Carrington Yates, winning by 6.1 seconds in the end, but taking the fastest lap as well. The biggest move there was Ian Jones gaining plenty of positions from 24th on the grid. James Brown was 11th ahead of Craig Jameson. And all the way down this packed, packed field, we're going to get 33 finishes because officially Joe Wiggin is classified as a finisher, but uh, he was almost a full lap down and scores very few points indeed. Yeah, that was that was the surprising thing for me. I think my um, my season's been summed up by bad starts. Uh, I think that's where, I, well, that's why I am where I am in the championship at the moment from bad starts. So it's pretty unbelievable to have two good starts, two in a row. And when that first one, when I got a good start at the, the uh, in the first race, I couldn't believe it when there was a red flag and we had to go back to normal positions, but um, managed to get a good start again. So I'm pleased, very pleased. So Sam Carrington Yates celebrates his second race win of the year here at Alton Park and he's joined on the podium by the son of Championship Coordinator Paul McCurley and perhaps a star of the future in the Compact Cup. Hello and welcome back to Alton Park where race number two of the Compact Cup is about to get underway. First though, let's catch up with some of the drivers after a frenetic race one. Uh, I've raced classic historic cars for quite a long time um, and I found that the cars were very forgiving so um, I actually came back to the Compact Cup to improve my driving because as you can see from the races in this season the level of driving is you know, it's, it's excellent. There's some ex, a lot of ex-champions and I thought what better way to uh, improve my own driving is throw myself in at the deep end and so it's taken me a little while to find my feet. Yeah. I run ATL, Aerotech Laboratories Limited. We are sole supplier to Formula One for the fuel tanks actually, so literally fuel running through the veins. Um, I've been MD there for about five years now and uh, just a, a, a big company with good connections, always been in motorsport, compact cup, perfect for me because one day meetings, I can get out of the office, still go and enjoy my racing without it interfering too much with business and, uh, and no vested interest because we haven't got ATL tanks in these ones. So here is how the cars line up on the grid for race number two here at Alton Park. It's James Gordon and Joe Wiggin row one, Steve Roberts, Simon Walker, Hansel row two, with Steve Daly and Declan McDonald row three, row four for Owen Hunter and Craig Jameson, row five, Neil Roach and Jim Benson with Jack Drury and Giles Dawson on row six. At the back though, look at that, Sam Carrington Yates our race one winner, Richard Miles and John Watt, three potential race winners, all looking to move forward. So it is James Gordon then on the pole position looking to try and bounce back, so too is Joe Wiggin after his uh, 33rd place finish in race one, those two tangled in race one as well remember so there's a bit of needle between the two of them we're about to go racing though again over 15 minutes away we go Joe Wigan makes a good start James Gordon makes a terrible start from pole position look at that he gets swamped by the whole field Joe Wigan has gone through into the race lead and that's Simon Walker Hansel challenging around the outside James Cornell the championship leader coming into this race by just three points over Joe Wigan uh, sorry over yes Joe Wigan in second place and uh, unfortunately things have all gone a little bit wrong for him so down towards Cascades we go it's Wigan from uh, Walker Hansel from Roberts the top three daily and then Craig Jameson uh, fourth and fifth so Craig Jameson with a storming start up the order started eighth and uh, top five well he hasn't had a top five yet this year so if he can hang on that would be superb on board with Neil Roach heading down towards the corner that caught him out on the first lap of race one he's on the outside again turning into the very very quick left hander at Island Bend this time though he keeps all four wheels on the black stuff closes in on Jim Benson he also had dramas there on the first lap of race one the positions don't change hands for the time being. Back out of the corner of the go, those two running just behind championship leader James Gornall. Well, if uh, things were to finish as they are now, James would most likely lose that championship lead to Joe Wiggin. There's Jack Drury there doing battle further down the order, just behind Mark Skeet and just behind Ian Jones as well. And Owen Hunter, two quick drivers who, like many, have a bit of work to do from towards the back end of the top ten. Leaders back over the hill towards his lops for the first time of asking and Owen, Joe, uh, Owen Hunter and Ian Jones are side by side in fact down towards Island Bend Ian though on the outside line is able to prevail and hold on to that particular position Owen Hunter though snapping at his heels looking for a way through through Nickerbrook back up the hill towards Druids another really dauntingly quick right, double apex right hander 
Ian Jones with uh, a decent run there actually on the run up towards Druid. So it's Wigan, Roberts, Walker Hansel, Daly and James in the top five. This is the fight for sixth between Declan McDonald and uh, James Gordle. Then eighth place for Jim Benson, ninth for Neil Roach and this is the fight for tenth position. And in fact gaining a place there was Ian Jones. So he's got himself into the top ten now. Down towards Lodge we go on board with Neil Roach. Jim Benson in front and just in front of him is James Gordle who goes on the inside of Declan McDonald. Gets into the side of Declan McDonald. And Declan's then very slow off the corner. That holds up Jim Benson and Neil Roach judged that to perfection. He saw the gap, he kept his foot in it and he picks up two places. So that puts James Gordon into sixth and Neil Roach into seventh. Jones is now trying to go through on the inside into eighth. He's going to do it. In fact, almost gets up the inside of Neil Roach as well with Jim Benson having dropped down the order too. So uh, all sorts going on outside of the top five. But the top five themselves have stretched away slightly. Now this is the start and James Gordon seemed to be caught napping there, didn't he? Everyone else was streaking off the line and he wasn't even uh, in first gear and ready to go. So James Gordon, look at the places he lost. He was almost down towards 10th place in his first corner, possibly outside the top 10 actually. He gets back up the inside of Owen Hunter and then Jim Benson on the extra bolt horse. So he's already gaining places back. This is on board with Neil Rose. Let's watch the lights. Oh, they were only on for a split second, so that's probably what caught Sir James Gordon out, but everyone else seemed to spot it. James just didn't, though, and from pole position, that was very costly indeed. Now, this is the fight for the race lead. Joe Wiggin and Steve Roberts are less than a car length apart, and they head up towards the Britain chicane once more. Steve Roberts, who has made this, at the moment, just one-off return to the championship. We hope to see him out again in the future, though. Won the championship last year and two years ago as well. James Gordon on the inside of McDonald's. This was a replay at Lodge Corner, and that was a, a late move, but James knows he has to make these moves, because as I said, if things were to finish as they are now, Wigan would take over the championship lead going into the finale at Silverstone next time. We only have two more races to go on the Silverstone International Circuit after this one, and still very much a three-way fight between James Gordon, Joe Wigan, and Steve Daly. Coming into this race, the three of them covered by just nine championship points. Down in towards Lodge again, Wigan ahead of Roberts. So uh, Steve Roberts, although he's not competing in the championship full time, of course, still scores points and can still take points away from Joe Wiggins. So it is important for Joe here that he keeps the two-time champion at bay. To finish the point I was making earlier on, he's the 2015 and 2013 champion is Steve Roberts. Won it twice and uh, dominated in both of those seasons. So he certainly is stiff opposition. Looking at the battles further back, this is uh, Jim Benson there uh, trying to claw his way ever further up the order. There's James Nookram catch a glimpse of with the uh, green headlight covers just flashing through the screen. James has had a bit of a quiet weekend, started this one 15th and has just lost a few positions since the start. And there, look, Sam Carrington Yates. We just caught a glimpse of him at the back of that group. So Sam Carrington Yates is starting to move up inside the top 20 now, having started all the way down in 32nd. He hit the tyres down at his lops in qualifying, so he only got one quick lap in, and the grid for race two was decided on the second fastest lap time set in qualifying. So because he only set one lap, he was right towards the back. Now, what was that that just flew off one of the cars? That looked almost like an exhaust fell off a car going down the lakeside straight. I didn't quite catch it. Hopefully we'll see a replay in a few moments and we'll be able to identify exactly what it was and whose car it came from. But a fairly large chunk of something fell off one of the cars and one of the cars in the lead pack, I think, as well. The rest of the field are streaming through up towards the uh, left, right, left flick, flick at uh, Britain's. There's James Nook Brown battling in behind Jack Drury and Mark Skeets, turning their way through Britain's. James um, Win Stanley is behind them as well, making his second appearance of the season. Neil Roach here with Declan McTonnell alongside him on the drop down towards his lops. They turn their way into the next little chicane. These chicanes, though, even though they're there to slow the cars down, they still have a really nice rhythm to them. It's a proper driver's circuit, the Alton Park International Circuit. And uh, it's why we get big grids every time we come here. Even though it's a bit of a journey for some of the drivers based down in the, in the south of the country, it's well worth the journey up here, isn't it? Because this is a circuit all of the drivers love. Now, here's yes, it is an exhaust. The exhaust falls off one of the cars, and I think that was Owen Hunter. And that is that is remarkable. I've never seen that before. The entire exhaust system fell off the car. There is Owen. Now, is he pulling off to slow down? Yes, he is. He's pulling off because uh, he knows that with no exhaust on the car, he can't go much further. So, Owen Hunter, it looks as though it's going to be a retirement. That is a big, big blow to his slim championship hopes. This 
this is the fight between Jack Drury, James Nutbrown and Mark Skeets. And both Jack and James have gone past Mark. And now Sam Carrington Yates is trying to buy into it all as well. Owen Hunter's on the grass on the right-hand side trying to keep out of everyone's way. But Sam Carrington Yates read that situation really well and picked up two or three positions in just a couple of corners there. So the blue and white card, really, he's made much better progress than either Richard Miles or John Watt have from the uh, back of the field. Richard Miles had mechanical problems in qualifying and got a couple of laps in. And uh, John Watt, we documented in race one with his power steering pump issues. Ari Ross there, the black and gold car, now splitting the two yellow machines of uh, Mark Skeets and James Wynn Stanley. And there is Richard Miles, in fact, the uh, blue and white car next in line. So Richard, a few positions still behind San Quentin Yates, having started actually alongside him on the 16th row of the grid. No sign in that shot of John Watt in the red and white car. There he is, just uh, towards the back of the picture. So John Watt uh, is quite some distance behind these other two, isn't he, that he started with at the back of the pack. Of course, the early dramas further down the order, as there always are, the midfield shuffle is always fairly intense on the opening laps, and if you don't get the rub of the green, then you get mired back in the in the back of the pack, and it's very hard to work your way forward from there. Carrington Yates, though, is making really nice forward progress. Another place gain now, the inside of James Nook Brown. So the uh, AWE liveried machine turns through, and I think Mark Skeets has just cut the chicane there, hasn't he? As he was dicing with Ari Ross and Richard Miles, so we'll see whether he has to give that place back. Ari Ross may just be able to take it from him anyway. He's quicker up the hill. Joe Wiggin coming through, and the last lap board is going out, so one more lap to go. Over the second half of this race, Joe Wiggin's really been able to build up a bit of a margin over Steve Roberts, so Steve Roberts in second place, not looking like he's going to be able to make the dream comeback and snatch a race victory. There is Steve Daly. Now, Steve Daly is also going to score more points than James Gorn, here, but of course, slightly less than Joe Wiggins. So, by my reckoning, Wiggin may move through into the championship lead here, but Daly, I think, may stay down in third place. There is the championship leader, James Gornall, down in fifth. Of course, third place could still change hands, though. Steve Daly has Simon Walker Hansel not that far behind him. Simon will tuck into the slipstream now down the lakeside straight. There's John Watt, meanwhile, trying to pick his way up the order. Gets up the inside of the, uh, the number 75 machine there going through turn one. That's Thomas Langford. And Thomas running him hard all the way down the next straight. Now, this was a, a fight he was having uh, a lap ago. That is the number 16 car of Oliver Smith, who John was up the inside of through his lops. Oliver took to the escape route, rejoined, and they were still side by side on the extra Nicker Brooks. So that battle was running and running. With just a couple of corners to go, though, Joe Wiggin is on his way to yet another race victory. This is going to be his uh, fourth race victory for the last five races, and he's really bought himself a brilliant opportunity at taking the title this season. He's certainly going to be in the mix going into Silverstone next time out. Steve Roberts has closed in on the final lap, but I don't think has quite got time to get there. So, Mac Attack Racing are going to be victorious again. It's not been a brilliant weekend for his teammate Declan McDonnell, but for Joe Wiggin, a very prosperous second race. That makes up for race one. Joe Wiggin takes the check of the flag. Steve Roberts is in second, and Steve Daly will just hold on to third from uh, Simon Walker Hansel fourth. And James Gordon had really caught them in fifth on the last lap. Sixth position across the line was uh, Steve, uh, sorry, was uh, Craig Jameson. And then here is Jim Benson. Now, Jim Benson is trying to pick another, up another couple of positions before the flag. He's chasing Neil Roach there, but can't get through. That was for ninth place. And Neil gets ninth. Jim is just inside the top ten. And there was Sam Carrington Yates in 13th position. Uh, there's John Watt as well. Now, John Watt is going to come through in 22nd, by my reckoning. So a few points, but not as many as he'd have liked. Joe Wiggin with the win then. Steve Roberts is second. Steve Daly is in third. Simon Walker Hansel is fourth. Ian Jones is fifth. Craig Jameson sixth. From Declan McDonald, Neil Roach, Jim Benson, and Giles Dawson there. 11th ahead of Jack Drury. Sam Carrington Yates was 13th. Richard Miles got as high as 15th in the end. Then outside the top 20, you can see Nick Hawes down there, 27th. Tim Scott Andrews was 28th. Owen Hunter, the only non finisher. Yeah, good race, really. Uh, I needed that after um, the first race with an incident that happened, but that has done. Um, so, yeah, it's four wins now over the moon. And now uh, I think, again, that's dragged me back into it for the championship. Just keep my head down and go again, really. I'm over the moon. I don't know who's where on points, I don't know who's what. But my aim is to, to go out there and just do the best I can and, and hopefully you know, win it and win the championship. I'm not, I'm not expecting anything, really, but I'm just trying my best. Well, after a topsy-turvy weekend, it's Joe Wiggin now three points ahead of James Gornall. Steve Daly is only nine points off the lead in third. And don't count out Ian Jones in fourth either. One thing's for sure, Silverstone finale is going to be exciting. Well, I have said it before, the BMW Compact Cup never failed to provide us with an amazing action-packed weekend's racing. And today here at Alton Park has been no exception. Please make sure you don't miss us when we join them for the season finale at Silverstone next month.